ball joint out. Grease all over the inside of my adapter. Keep all the tools nice and clean. It'll last a long time. Now I got the new ball joint. X6664. This one up now. We need to make sure we've got a receiver. Clears it. I don't even like that. The boot doesn't fit through. Where do the what do these people think of when they put these things together? Let's go grab some silicone grease. I don't know why. That much. doesn't even make sense. Really important that you get that boot started through there, otherwise you'll end up slicing it. cup that fits the bottom of this almost does and that one almost does and we'll be right back and that was the owner and we're gonna be firing the parts cannon at this thing again this time we're gonna be uh, getting a new bearing for this in the meantime, let's get this ball joint the rest of the way in. Let's see if I can find a receiver cup or something I can push this with without damaging it.
get the uh, snap ring. up. The snap ring is going to be a lot of fun. Should, should go grab my snap ring pliers. Yeah, I need my snap ring pliers because these are going to damage this way too easily if I'm not careful. See if I can find them. Because we know this bearing is shot and it's going to be replaced, might as well get this out of here now. So that's a 19, so those are 18s. That's an 18. Uh, let's see, where's the impact? Uh, it's still on the uh, C press. So I go back down in a ways. Yep, DFH. Stand it up. DFH for the win. Three bolts back out of it. There's one. There's two. There's three. Just be careful with the ABS. Well, actually, doesn't matter because we're replacing it anyways, but make sure you get that back on there correctly. And we'll set this off to the side and pack this one up until the new wheel bearing arrives.
rest of this is cluttered. All the SAEs are on the bottom. All of my metrics are up on the top. You'll note that almost all of my metrics are six point. Six points my preference for literally everything. In 19, 18, 17, 14, 15 floating around in here somewhere. There's a 16 right there. Uh, 13, 12, 11, 10. 11's already gotten a crap beat out of it, but I got another one of those in the backup box. And a couple of little small quarter inch random ones. Uh, 7 30 seconds. That'll just float free in here because I hardly ever use that. All sorts of random stuff in here, but if I need it, I know where it is most of the time. Okay, like this 15, probably should the gear wrench. I put these down on the bottom. This usually is on the bottom, but I've been using it more often, so it's migrated its way up towards the top. I need another, an additional toolbox, really. I need a truck. Bunch of things. But, for as long as I can, I try to take care of my tools. I think it just looks nice when they're not all totally filthy and covered in grease. So I try to be a little careful with them. This axle nut. Gotta reuse that. This axle's not worth a hill of beans either. It doesn't have floor mats down in there. So I need to go grab a plastic bag, finish picking up this mess. Come back as soon as I've got the uh, wheel bearing. There's no sense of putting everything all back together when I'm just going to take it back apart again. Alright, we're back again. It's time to put the wheel bearing in. We weren't able to get the uh, steering wheel boot or the rack boot for the other side. And the sway bar lengths, we'll worry about those at another time. So we're just going to put the hub bearing back in, torque down these bolts here. I brought my torque wrench along because people have been beating me up over it. Um, I'm going to do the best that I can with the torque values. Some of them are pretty consistent across all the research I've been doing. And some of them are not. So we're going to set the torque wrench at a happy number and see how it feels all right now got this back in place just for the time being so we can mount the bearing in there's our new bearing part number for any of you guys that are interested in car quest number sitting over in the car. Set that down, stud facing down so we don't cause any damage to the bearing seal or the back side of it. Get that out of the way. I'm going to grab my anti seize we'll coat that up real quick. Well, the only reason we're coating this up is just to help cut back on rust. We don't even need a lot in there, but we'll on the outside here as well. 
Uh, I'm gonna go for a little blown tin man effect in a moment. Should get a new got a new container, just haven't gotten around to opening it up yet. Everything in there good coated. Just outer ridge coated. This way here we got a nice coating on everything without having any major globs anywhere. Just a nice thin coating of it. Got some blue Loctite. The original bolts that were in there. Got the new hub assembly. Let's unwrap. Carefully unwrap. Make sure that everything fits properly. All right, now we're going to have to set this over this. Sit just like this. And then the sensor is going to have to sit over here. So we're going to run this through here first. Make it difficult for myself. We'll set this right there just like that. And then grab the whole assembly, hold the wire up and out of the way, and pivot it. Place, lining, lining up your bolt holes. I'm going to take one bolt, put it in, just start it for the time being. Okay, that'll hold it. Now we're going to take the other bolts and we're going to put a little bit of blue thread locker on them. You don't need a lot, just a, just a little bit. That's because I don't really trust all the torque specs that I've come across. I don't have access to all data or Mitchell. Uh, I probably will in the near future because it's really an invaluable resource. Right, now that I got the two bottom bolts in, take the top bolt back out again. Put just a little bit of blue thread locker on it. We already got blue traces of it on here, so it was used before. And then run those bolts all the way down in. Now because we are not uh, hooked up to anything yet, I can turn this where you can kind of see what we're doing back here. The new ball joints are in, top and bottom. Let's put the cap on this before the stuff dries out on it. Same thing with this one. Right. Everything that I found so far had basically between 77 and 90 foot pounds. 90 seemed to be the most common, so I set the torque wrench for 90. That's 18 millimeter. And we're just going to get in here and probably should have ran that all the way down there first. Definitely should have run that all the way down in first. All right, hold on for just a moment. I'm not gonna rail these in, I'm just gonna spin them in lightly. That one's already. down 90 foot pounds
There we go, all three to 90 foot-pounds. Let's go back, double check them. There we go. Right now, turn the axle the other way. That's against the stop. Okay, well, we need to get the upper ball joint out so we can put the axle shaft in. Get the pinch bolt out. That pinch bolt was definitely holding it. That's what it's designed to do. Now let's get this lifted up. Tip that down, take the axle, just line the axle in, get it into the transmission, into the seal, hit it a couple times to park it real good. Probably won't be able to insert this this way, but we'll see. No, I didn't think so. So we're going to have to disconnect that lower, lower ball joint also. Now, take the knuckle, slide the knuckle over the axle, rotate it, get it underneath the ball joint, lift it up, hold it in place. Ah. Get that nut started on the bottom. And at this point, if you want, go ahead and stuff the top one back in again. We're going to run that one all the way down. Give you a 14 millimeter nut on the replacement bolt with a 15 millimeter head. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but we'll go with that. We'll grab a different socket. Be right back. 50, 40, and 30. Now let's see what happens at 30. I don't think I've ever gone this low with this. According to this, we're already there. This bottom one's supposed to be torqued to... Oh, uh, let's see. I've got 79 and 90. All right. We'll go for 90. Back up to 90. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 foot pounds. Now, let's see where our little hole for our cotter pin is. Right here in the front, and it's already lined up. So get the cotter pin in, long side facing down on this one. Get it right in. Just gently persuade it the rest of the way. Grab the long one, pull the long one down. 
and fold it right around the stud. That way there nobody gets caught on that. Now let's get the uh, tie rod end hooked up. Castle nut down on. And that one was not an 18. Why is that not an 18? Didn't hit the castle side of it. 19. Let's get the steering wheel turned a little bit. Let's see, tie rod in, they're saying 39 to 42. So what do you think we should set this one at? Uh, I'm going to go for 39 and then see how it feels. How's that work? So set it for 40. And go all the way back down. Are 40. And I'm going to go a little further to line up that hole. And it looks like it's lined up nice and straight. Let's see, double check. Tie rod and 39 to 42. Okay. Put that cotter pin in. It was in there before. This is the one I commented on about uh, not having the ends sticking out where somebody can get caught caught on them. There we go. Now let's get our rotor. Spin the axle not on by hand. Time being. Yes, we're reusing the axle nut. You're supposed to replace the axle nut every time it comes off, but you know, in the real world, <laughs> they didn't give us a new nut with the hub. And we'll turn back the other way. Grab our blue towel, fold it into quarters, grab some brake cleaner, and spray it on the cloth. Very good and wet. Good way to conserve on the brake, brake cleaner. Yuck. Not that this really makes a whole lot of difference because it's all gross to begin with. But if we got any grease on here or anything, Get it all off this way. And then set your rotor back on. Pull the caliper down. Get that off with a hook. Caliper bracket bolts. Get those started in there. Now, before we go tightening everything up, make sure we've got everything where we need it. And in this case, we're all set. Our brake lines in the back here. Let's get these two little bolts out for now. I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on these because I know these things have a tendency to seize in there and then they break. So 
save somebody else a humongous headache in the future. Wow, don't need that much. Just a little bit. that back up again and let's get those two little ones in here these are 10 millimeter these are like 110 inch pounds or something like that I don't have a torque wrench that goes down to 110 inch pounds. I don't even have a torque wrench that does inch pounds. But I do have a smaller one that goes down to like 10 or 15. And speaking of 10, I don't have, oh there it is. Little overkill, half inch drive, 10, <laughs> 6.10 millimeter. Guaranteed to snap off any bolt that doesn't come out willingly. All right, everybody, get good and nervous. He's got a two foot breaker bar on it, 10 millimeter bolt. But you're gonna love this one. Fingertip torque. There you go. <laughs> And I got no room over on this side to do anything. Yeah, figures. Let's go get a 10 millimeter wrench and stop being stupid about this. All right. There we go. There we go. Now, caliper bolts. Spin these down in. Let's get those 18 millimeter bolts on the back of the bracket spun in. And the bracket bolts, from what I've seen, is, uh, wow. Let's see, I got 100, I got 110, I got 142. 142 my butt, not that ain't gonna happen. But uh, let's see, what do we got here? Um, I'm gonna go with 110. Now nah, I'm just gonna go with 100 and see what happens there. And we were last down here on 40. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and we'll just go to 100. Tell you the truth, I think that 110 number sounds better. Now we'll go to 110. That didn't make much of a difference, but. There we go. While we're here, these were 31. I'm not gonna be able to get all the way down to 31 too easily. Those were 17s, but we're gonna double check them anyways. Yeah, those are tight probably too tight but it is what it is Colton Trump it is 
what it is. Everything's moving. All right, tie rod ends done, cotter pins in. Lower ball joints done, cotter pins in. Upper ball joint pinched, torqued. Those are in, now let's get the ABS hooked up and we'll straighten the steering wheel out. Okay, now let's get this ABS wiring routed in here. Not going to be super easy to get you guys a good view because of the glare from the sun, but see I cast my shadow on the camera and this little guy right here comes around the back side tucked underneath the hose clips in comes back around the front side we've already got a holder there so we're gonna pop this one off maybe Pop that one off and slip it into this one. And lock it down. And then we'll come back here to this back one. Also, is already in place. So we'll release this one. This one's a little trickier. Alright, now that I got a little screwdriver. We'll get into this one here and release that one so we can put it into this one and then this one back here and another little holder snap this one into that little holder try to not get in your way here Like not getting in your way is not going to happen. All right, get a little sticker. In you go. Now lock down. You lock on the inside. You lock on the outside. Lock on the inside. Okay, now bring your connector down underneath. Press it into the hole. Put your connector back up. Push your lock clip back in place. Why you always spin them on by hand first? That would have been a bad day. Same thing right here. You don't get them started and you hit them with an impact. And you wreck them. Let it down off the jack stands. There, both jack stands at the same time. And the axle nut, apparently there's a little bit of controversy in these also. Maybe a 36 millimeter or a 35. In this case, we're dealing with a, uh, I think, a 36, but it could be a 35. The 36 works on it. And everything pointed at 103. So we're currently at 110. 
So let's back that off. Let's see. Do 103. There we go. And spin this all the way on. That's 103. I don't know why 103 doesn't feel that tight to me, but we'll go with that. That's what I was finding. If you find that this was like 174 or something like that, let me know in the comments. I'll uh, pin the comment up top with uh, the source if you could please and uh, yeah that's how you replace the upper ball joint lower ball joint and the unexpected wheel bearing with ABS sensor uh, on this particular 2002 Chevy Trailblazer they uh, most of them all the way up through I believe 2006 2007 are all uh, the same style so if you guys found this one helpful, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. I encourage you to hit that notifications bell, and we'll catch you on the next one. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. Yep, I went back and I torqued this down to about 177. My torque wrench goes up to 150. I added a little bit more. I did some more research and it said 170 and that seemed a little bit more realistic so we put 177 here it says 103 for the, the lug nuts the 103 feels realistic for the lug nuts and don't forget to put your center cap back on. It's a little lug nut symbol right there. And a couple of missing tabs here and there. There's also supposed to be a metal ring that goes around the inside of this. But uh, when you don't put them on right, they get broken. That's it, just like that. And we're done. And make sure you don't forget to uh, Increase into your fittings here. Yeah, just keep going until that bottom. Boot bulges. There we go. And we're all done now. So don't forget to reach your ball joints. Seventeens. I didn't bring a seventeen. Why or why? Up? Did I? No, I didn't. Uh, all right. Let's go spin those seventeens in. Those aren't seventeens. Those are eighteens. Let's start that one over again.